Testing. All right. Well, it looks like we're live. This is good. Uh, I'm just going to switch up the camera here and I'll say hello. All right. Hi, everyone. Everyone who's here, I see. Stelios here, Bernd. That's great to see you guys. Thanks for joining. Uh, it's been a pretty crazy week. I've been <laughs> messing around trying to get something that works for my background um, on this painting I want to do today. And um, I put down a... Hey, Stefan, nice to see you. Um, I put down a, an oil primer, uh, a, an oil ground, and um, unfortunately it didn't dry in time. It's just like three, four days ago. Maybe I put it down too thick. I'm not sure. But anyhow, I, I decided I'd put some kind of color over top of, of this because I like to work into some color. And of course, when I started moving it around, the ground underneath started to come apart. And I'm thinking, oh, no, what am I going to do? Um, so, and that was this morning that when it started to come apart. So uh, what I've done is I have uh, taken some acrylic and um, kind of mixed it all together and imitated what I had down before. And, of course, acrylic dries pretty quickly. But now I'm painting over acrylic, which is kind of a drag because I really wanted to do this on an oil ground. So <clears throat> stuff happens. And fortunately, I had some acrylic paint that would give me the colors that I wanted. So here we are. Um, great to see all you guys. Um, so great to have Stefan here because I know I can count on him to give me some good comments. <laughs> And um, Baron, it's great to see you. Petra, Andrew, uh, this is wonderful. Thank you for joining today. Um, so I should just get to business here. Um, it's This is kind of a, a fun thing. Um, I'll kind of walk you through what my thoughts are and what I'm hoping to do. I'm trying to um, – I'm heading on this was – uh, less is more, and I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to pull this off. I'm hoping that I can do more with less, um, but having said that, I actually mixed up a whole bunch of paints ahead of time, and I realized, wow, I've got a lot of paint colors going here. Um, it doesn't feel like less, but maybe the preparation time that I've put together uh, in putting this stuff together will make less time in the painting part of it. I really don't know. So we'll see what happens. Um, Angelica, great to see you. Um, thank you for showing all of you. This is really nice. Um, it, you know, it's uh, sort of crazy because you never know who's going to show up and who isn't. And I realize that some people like to watch these things later. I've had people ask, you know, can we see it in another place? And really happy if you pass this on to any of your friends or any other artist who you think might might be interested 
um, because uh, I'm trying through these to give you a few little tips and hints, um, you know, to to get to move you along. And Stefan's saying he has to leave in a few minutes for his own stream. This everybody's going to leave me alone. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> If you're not watching Stefan's uh, streams, then you really should. Um, they're very inspiring. And um, uh, pretty soon I'm going to be copying everything he does. No, just not really. Um, I don't know how to do that. So here we are. Uh, I'm going to take you to the um, my palette here. I'll just show you the paints that I'm using uh, for this particular one and that's why um, I'm looking at this and thinking wow like yeah less is more but look at all these paints I've got like 10 colors out here I think two four six eight yeah ten plus white and um, you know usually I like to work with sort of a limited palette but um, I want to put um, I want to put all my stuff together and have myself organized so that when I'm actually painting, um, I'm spending less time thinking about colors. And and I've actually pre-mixed some colors here. And I'm hoping to use some of these colors in my painting today. So I haven't been too concerned with color harmony. Um, I'm kind of going with this ochre... Uh, lemon yellow, um, viridian, and uh, manganese blue kind of feeling through this. And, and um, there may be some transparency what I do, so that'll help pull it together as well. Um, okay. Hi, Christian. Nice to see you. So, and hi, Ken. Nice to see you, too. This is great. When everyone shows up, I feel like I'm actually talking to a bunch of people and and not just myself, although I'm pretty good at talking to myself, as it seems. All right, so going through the colors, um, I've got cadmium lemon. It's a Windsor Newton. I've got yellow ochre, uh, which is an old Holland uh, yellow ochre. I have something in here, uh, magenta. It's a color I like to use sometimes. And again, it's old Holland. just has a certain intensity about it. It's a, a brighter, more intense cooler uh, red. Um, if you think of CMYK, um, you know, magenta is the the M in CMYK. So that's kind of interesting to think about. Um, it's a real serious primary. Uh, cadmium red, and this is cadmium red medium. I would have liked to have cadmium red light for this particular one, but I couldn't put my hands on any in the studio. Alizarin Crimson. So I have three reds out here. And the funny thing is that uh, I don't have a lot of red in this image, but we'll see what happens. Um, okay. So uh, also manganese blue. And I've also got uh, diox uh, um, dioxazine purple. I can never say that right. Um, this is a Griffin paint. So this is a paint that has uh, Elkid already in it, and that means it will dry up a little faster. Uh, in fact, it will dry up within about 24 hours. Um, and uh, I used to use that an awful lot when I was illustrating because um, I needed to uh, be able to, you know, sort of complete things quickly. I like the idea of having oil because it can keep moving it around. And um, uh, I, I still want it to dry quickly so that I can actually put some glazes and things over top of that later. So, um, you know, it's just one of those uh, things that I have a whole set of different Griffin colors. So if I need to paint something very quickly, um, I can do that. The other option, of course, is to put in some Elkid uh, medium and that will dry things up as well. You're hearing my photocopy here go off in the background. Okay. All right. Um, okay. So I've got um, some ivory black extra. This is um, an old Holland. I also have cypress umber dark. And so these two I've mixed to get this dark over here. The cypress umber dark is a little bit too warm for, for what I want to do today. 
See, Stefan's really happy to see him using manganese blue. Um, he would be using the phthalo blue, which just wrecks all your brushes. And you know, he knows how to control it. I, I can't keep uh, phthalo in control. So, um, okay. We've also got uh, a Viridian here, which is the Luca Studio. This is really an old tube, almost done. So, because I couldn't find a Viridian in Old Holland, which I prefer. Okay. Um, so I've got my primaries out here, but I pre-mixed some colors uh, ahead of time, as I showed you. And um, I'm going to try and get into, you know, as much of the pre-mixed stuff as I can instead of trying to mix a whole bunch. Uh, all right. So I'm going to uh, go here. Let me just change my cam around to here. So um, you can see the uh, image that um, I'm I hope I'm well I'm working from. And this is um, a cafe West End in Vienna. And it's a fabulous cafe uh, to sit in. Sometimes someone's playing the piano and you know, the food's okay. Um, not brilliant. It's okay. It's right across from Westbahnhof. Some of you from Vienna will know this place. And the waiters are just as uh, well friendly here as they are everywhere in Vienna. And if you know what I'm talking about, you know that they don't rush over to try and help you. Um, you have to beg them to get the bill. On the table, you'll see here there are a couple of uh, containers that hold bread. And this is like a, a really tricky thing uh, because, what, you know, the first couple of times going into the cafes, we didn't realize that if you take a piece of bread out of that basket, you have to pay for it. Oh, you have to pay extra for it. Um, you know, we just thought, oh, that's nice. They're putting out some bread and, you know, we can have that with our goulash or whatever we happen to have. And um, we just thought, isn't that nice? It's all included. But then you get the bill later and you realize that they charge you for every piece of bread over and above the meal. So that's just something different there. Um, and there are parts of Europe to do this, but uh, that was just a bit of a surprise. So a warning to anyone who goes to these cafes, just, you know, if you want to eat bread, you, you, we're going to pay extra for that. It's not all, all in. Um, so... Uh, this gentleman, this waiter, was just uh, walking by and kind of glancing at the table, just checking to see how everyone's doing. And he's got a tray with like a, a, a red cup on it. And there's something else on it. I think it's actually water, if I'm not mistaken. But I'm not, it doesn't matter. Um, I want to get a sense of the, the rhythm, the mood, the feeling of this whole scene. And of course, if you saw the image on Facebook, you realize I've already painted this. Um, and I painted it a little larger. I think it was, well, maybe a foot and a half by a foot and a half, something like that. Um, or maybe even two feet by two feet. I don't recall. Um, I do know that um, when I took it into Gallery Augustin, uh, who has represented me in Vienna, that um, it was leaning up against the wall and it actually never got hung on the wall because somebody came in and saw it leaning there and decided that they wanted it right away. So that was kind of a neat sale. I was really happy to see that happen, of course. Um, and I've always wanted to revisit this image and just see what I can do with it. So what I've done, uh, which I don't usually do in these streams, um, but I'm, I've done it today. Uh, and I, all I've done is a quick sketch of this with in paint um, with a fine brush, you know, just to get the shapes working and the composition working. And you can see the color background that I have here. And again, that's acrylic um, that's dry now. And over top, I've used a little bit of an oil uh, combination of the Rublev and the Ivory Black, um, the uh, um, Old Holland Ivory Black, and just given myself something to follow. 
it doesn't mean I have to follow this exactly. I, I, I can change my mind as I go, but I did want to try and get some accuracy here so that, you know, the shapes are working. Now, you'll notice here, if you've watched my previous streams, um, I, I like to divide my canvas into threes or thirds. And so I would draw a line here and here, and of course, vertically as well. But instead of doing that this time, what I did was I measured things out and I just put a dot here and here, here and here. And that gives me the squares that I need visually. And I'm just imagining that it's all drawn out, but I, I can keep these in mind while I'm drawing, while I'm painting. And that just keeps everything where it needs to go. So I'm filling those squares with my drawing. That's all I've done. Um, and I just find it's a quick, easy way to, um, instead of putting all the lines all over the place and, you know, they sometimes interfere with your final painting. So, um, all right. So I'm going to get rid of, uh, let me just do this. Uh, I'm going to get rid of all of these tubes, but I'll put them somewhere safe just in case I need them again. And start right in with some fresh paint. I realized last time I painted, I went like two hours. So, you know, um, if I do a little of this prep work ahead of time, I can get this in place and people don't fall asleep while I'm mixing colors. All right. So if you want to see those uh, colors here, um, you can see what I've mixed up. I've got a a grouping of greens and I've got sort of the the blue violet section here this is um, ivory black in the rublev uh, um, and I've added cadmium red into this uh, so I've really warmed that up in fact I added some alizarin as well so so it's gone a lot warmer I may use that in some of the chairs that I see and um, just some again light greens uh, into darker more neutral greens and these violets and blues that I think hopefully will will work for the program. Um, all right. So nice to see you, Rita. This is great. Nice to see all of you folks here. This is great. Um, I'm going to uh, start, you know, typically I would work from uh, dark to light. And so I'm going to do this, and I want to go into this in a very loose fashion. I'm going to use a little bit of medium. And let me just bring this up large. So oh, there we go. Um, the medium I'm using is um, uh, a combination of uh, Elkid. Uh, in fact, it's called Gelkid. Uh, it's, it's a light uh, gamblin. Uh, one part of this stuff here uh, to five parts of um, this, uh, what's it called? Gamsol, right? And a little bit of linseed oil as well. I've just thrown a little bit in because it kind of makes it a little smoother. Um, but it's just a nice um, kind of oily blend, but it's not, you know, so oily that it takes forever to dry because of the uh, Gelkid. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna go into my darks first. And um, maybe if I do this, I wonder if you can, if I can do this so you can see what I'm mixing at the same time. I think I can do it this way. And at least you'll be able to see a little bit of what I'm doing here. And I just want to block in uh, the big shapes. I have this really funny brush that I like to use. It's like more than a dagger. It's like a sword. Um, but it's a soft brush, and I can drop some shapes in. And I need to get a little more paint than that. Um, I can drop these shapes in very simply. And if I want to get some very fine details, of course, I can, I can go into it with this brush as well with the other side. And what I'm doing 
is again, you know, the whole program here, less is more, right? So I want to see if I can limit my brush stroke somewhat and keep my shape simple. Um, I'm going to go into this even more. I probably didn't even need any medium in that. And I just want to block things. I like when that kind of thing happens. You see some of the color that comes through from underneath. If I want to get rid of it, of course, I can just soften it down. But sometimes that's really nice. It just uh, it's one of those accidental things that can look really cool. Um, and because I've done the drawing ahead of time, um, doesn't mean that I shouldn't be drawing now. I want to be really aware of the shapes that I'm looking at as I paint this and try and get the shapes to work in the right places. And again, I'm not thinking about jacket here. I'm just looking at the shapes that I see uh, in my reference. I have a, a small iPad above this so that I can look at what I'm painting and I'm trying as much as I can to imitate the shapes that I see. Now the neat thing here is that because um, this is painted over acrylic and the acrylic's dry, uh, if I do something that I don't like, I just went over this little line right here. I can go back with a Q-tip and I can just pull the paint off where I want to, make it a little more accurate. Try and keep my shapes accurate without getting, you know, super ridiculous here because I can always go back and correct things later. This is his tie. He's got a black tie. Very fancy. Looks like he's going to a wedding. Huh. The waiters like to dress up in some of these places. Cafe West End is one of those real touristy cafes. Those of you who know it, uh, it's right beside Westmanhof. They like to charge good dollars for what they do. Um, uh, Heike, yes, I did take this photo. Yeah. Um, uh, I guess when we were there, I tried to take as many photos as I could, knowing that, well, we weren't going to be living in Vienna forever, and that someday I might want to use these things as reference. So I do love the cafes there. And having painted in them so often, I sort of have a feeling of, of what they look like. And um, yeah, I've done a lot of cafe paintings, not painting in the cafe now. So it's really good, you know, even if you are out somewhere painting and you're working on a project or a scene that you really like, um, just snap two or three photos uh, while you're there. So you've got some reference to check back with it later. Maybe you want to make some corrections with your painting. Um, and, um, you know, it's a, it's good reference. Sometimes I'll take uh, like a part of one photo and, you know, add it to another scene somewhere else because I think it'll work better. Um, I'm going to eliminate some things from this photos right now. I'm really going for these dark shapes. And again, this is a little bit of a cool uh, dark. It's not absolutely black because I've got some Rublev in here, um, but it's a cool color. And I really want to try and keep my lines clean and straight so that there's some sense of architecture in it. You can let shapes like this blend together, you know, so we don't know where he begins and ends. And it's really great to tie these shapes together as much as you can, because it gives more strength to your painting. This is something I was trying to explain and um, working with large shapes. So uh, in one of the other live streams that I did. And as this dries out a little bit, this paint, I can soften things down or go over it all with a big brush. Uh, in a way, 
there's sort of an illustrative quality to these things when you work this way. Um, I'm trying to tell a story and I want to tell it simply. I'm not going to put all those bread baskets on the table. I want to keep it simpler than that, but I may put the flower in here in this vase like I did in the one that I showed on Facebook to advertise this program. Um, I want to use a drier brush here. So I'm just kind of tapping some of the color and oil out of my brush on a paper towel here. And I'm going to go in over here. And the reason I want a drier brush is because I want to see a little less of that intense dark and maybe see some of the texture of the canvas here behind, which I think is kind of a nice thing to do. Um, it doesn't take too many of these kinds of shapes to give a sense of what we're looking at, hopefully. It sort of makes sense. Like, okay, there's some fella sitting here. Just going to put some hair on his head. <clears throat> and go back in and put some hair on the waiter's head, too. Why not? While we're at it. He's got more hair in his head than I do. That's for sure. Okay, so I just want to, you know, think about the shapes. I can see his eyes go in here, well, in his nose. I don't know if he has a mustache or not. I don't remember, but we can figure that out later. It looks like some German fellow we won't talk about. I might have to get rid of that. It looks like a little mustache. <laughs> All right. Um, there are a couple of things that are kind of neat in this cafe. I like the old clocks. I'm just going to put a little bit of that clock up in there. And... I'm just looking for darks right now. You know, where are they? I see there's a dark over here, probably connected to what's going on above it here. Um, on this side over here, there's some dark. And I'm just going to run it up there because I want to make that guy sort of fit into the background. And this will be kind of obscure. I'm not really sure what we're going to do there yet. So there's a, there's a table back there, but we'll put that in in more detail if we have to. I I'm really want to do less than more. That's the whole idea here. Uh, okay, maybe I'm going to get a little bit of dark in underneath this, uh, this uh, tablecloth down here. I'm not sure if you can see that, actually. I realize that... Um, you can't see the whole thing when you're looking at it this way. You need to tip that down a bit. Anyhow, maybe I'll pull back towards the end if I remember to do that. And I'm going to get some darks going in here. There's some kind of chair happening over here. And I'm going to move the chair over so I can see it better. The back of the chair. You see my brush is so dry now. I need to pick up more paint. Okay. And just a couple of spots up top here so that I know there's some lines that come across this way. So we've got some perspective happening. There's a little dark section behind his neck, but I think I'm gonna leave that alone. All right. Okay, so that's kind of like how I would start. Going to clean that brush out. And at this stage, kind of look at it and decide, you know, are all these shapes interesting? Are they taking my eye into the painting? And I want to join my darks as much as I can. So I'm, I'm going to sneak a couple of things in here and 
yeah, they're not there in the reference. They're just not, but I'm going to join them up anyhow. Um, I want to get a sense of things connecting. And that just makes the, the painting stronger. Okay. All right. Now, I'm going to get a brush that has a little bit more substance to it. Uh, I have to work with a couple of brushes. I'll need a couple of sizes. And I want them to be a little bit stiffer. So these are uh, Princeton Aspen brushes. I really like working with these things. They're, uh, you can get a nice clean passage of paint down. Um, I'm going to set something up here. Uh, actually, before I even go in with the brush, I want to try and give myself a sense where the lightest lights are going to be. And I, I feel like, you know, when I look at uh, the original painting that I did, um, I had light in the table here. And I also had some nice light in his shirt. Uh, up here. So I want to set those up. And again, this is just going with a palette knife. I want to keep my shape simple. And I do like the way the texture comes in from behind when you do this. Just turning that palette knife a little bit. And that gives me a sense of where my lights are going to be. Now I'm going to take a bright white, which by the way, you never really see in, in real life, but I'm just going to put it there to remind myself that the lightest light I can possibly have is there. So other colors have to be relative to it. Um, I'm going to go into the background now and start to put some greens, get some substance. Right now, everything here is very transparent. So I want to get some paint down and just, you know, chunk it in and see if I can't get a sense of the colors that are going on back here. Sometimes the transparency, uh, transparency is really nice because you can let that show through and that gives some nice fresh color in areas. And I also want to think about keeping colors related to each other in certain zones. So this kind of color uh, is going to work. And these are just frames on the wall with some kind of images in them. And I want to keep a sense of that color moving all the way through. They all belong in the same lighting condition, if that makes any sense. So that's something you can look for. Uh, this is a way of harmonizing your color, of course, but it's also a nice design feature when you can keep your colors related to each other within the same lighting zone. And at this point, I want to be a little bit accurate because, you know, I don't want to have to go back and do these things over again if I can avoid it. I'm going to set up a little lighter color against that just to see what that looks like. It's maybe a little too late. I don't know. Some reflections coming into these paintings or, or whatever photos that were on the wall. It's a point where you really want to keep things Simple, crisp, don't fuss with them too long. Um, I'm going to get another green going in here, which is a, a stronger green that will lead up to this waiter. It's a nice green. I like it. It's uh, 
very different from the others that are going there. It's much warmer and it takes your eye over to him. I don't want that to stand all alone, that green. So I'll take it up here as well. Always keeping in mind that your shapes shouldn't be too repetitive because it's more interesting to looking at things when there are good negatives and positives together and when you have a variety of color and edges There's a funny little sort of warm color that happens. I'm going to just pop a little of this in. I'm going to take some of that uh, dark that I made, which is quite pink when you add some white to it, and just pop a little of that in here just to break up this area. Don't ask me why. just feels like it needs something there. Okay, um, now there's lots of green going here. I, I do want to set up some of the uh, blues as well. So um, I'm going to go into the table and just get some of that going uh, down in here. And I'm letting some of the green peek through. Again, that background helps to harmonize things. I'm going to go into a little darker blue because this area here is in shadow. And I'm just going to throw this in here. Once you get these colors in place, it gives me a sense of where my light and shadows are. i um, even going to go into this with a bit of violet over here. That can, these colors can work really nicely together. You know, the blues and violets, there, there's some harmony there. And it's funny because I've got those brushes out and they're in my hand still, but here I am working away with a palette knife. But I think what I'll do is I'll take one of these brushes now and start to soften some of these things together. Um, very, and this is a dry brush, by the way, so I'm working very softly into this, allowing some of these textures to show through. You know, what's the point of putting a beautiful color down and painting over it and not having any of it peeking through? And the point of it peeking through is that we harmonize the whole thing Um when we allow one color to kind of per uh, well to intrude uh, on all the other colors keeping it pretty loose here don't need to get into a ton of detail At this stage i can start co covering up some of the line work that i put in it's okay So I hope you guys have been painting lots. You know, when we're doing these things, um, I don't know about you, but I kind of get inspired to paint more whenever I do these things. And uh, it's it's just a, a bunch of fun. So um, it's really fun to watch someone paint, but it's even more fun to paint. So... I always have to be aware when I'm cleaning my palette knife out, I go over the paper towel where I've cleaned it out before. I don't pick up old paint from the paper towel. And so it's really trying to keep clean as much as possible because then you end up with clean color. If you, <laughs> if you pick up dirty color, then you end up with dirty color on your painting. So... 
Try to keep it clean where you can. Right now, I'm really squinting at it, just looking at the big shapes. And again, less is more. I don't want to get all fussy with this. I don't want to get into all kinds of detail I don't need to. It doesn't serve any purpose to do that. Looking at values, I'm mixing a couple of the blues together here. I want the values down here to get a little darker because they're a little further away from the light source that's over here. And I'm letting the texture that's underneath here determine uh, the gradations that you see. They almost happen naturally when I go over this, like this. It's really picking up on that texture. Nice, I like it. Okay. The sense of light and shadow. I think I need to go in a little, little bit more paint on the edge over here. Cover up that line that I see. And I still get some of that texture that comes through, which is nice. I think I put a heavier texture down than I realized. Okay. I'm going to go into the light area again um, here. And with a palette knife, I can pull some of the lights up that come across this table. I've got a vase that's going in here eventually. So I want to leave it clean. And I'll just do the same on the other side. Maybe I see a little bit of that light coming through the vase. Um, I actually don't in my reference, but I'm going to put a bit here because it helps connect everything. And I'll go back and detail that up a little more when I need to. OK. Still trying to go for the mood overall of this thing. All right. Hi, and welcome. Nice to see you here. Um, okay, in these dark areas here, uh, I've kept them very simple, uh, but I can bring some color into them. Um, now, it's dried up a little bit. I'm going to add just a little bit of, uh, this is the uh, magenta that I've got going here. I just want to bring a little more color into these shadow areas. And it's probably hard for you to see that. Uh, maybe if I lighten it a bit, um, you'll see a little bit more in these areas. Because I don't want it to all be just one big you know, black shape. It's, it's not what it is. It's, it has some color in it. Um, but I can change the colors in the shadows. We don't see much color in shadows. But I can move these shadows around a little bit and add a little more color to them as I go. And it adds just a little more excitement and interest in these areas here. And I can simplify things at this stage. I, you really don't need to see all those textures. We see less texture in shadow areas, typically. So let me pull it together. You know, this guy, it's like the, the bodiless man. There's just a head floating there. It's funny. We'll deal with that in a bit. So I'm just, again, going back and trying to get a little more color and interest in the darks. There's something I'll do sometimes. I'm going to clean this brush off. And 
it, sometimes it works well and sometimes it doesn't. So I have to really be careful when I do this. I've cleaned my brush off. Usually what I'll do is use a dry brush. So maybe that's what I should do. That's a good idea. And uh, just soften areas out. So I'm just going to take this. It's a dry brush, but the paint will still move. And I'm just going to soften areas down just to give a sense of atmosphere here. Um, because the paint isn't fully dry, I can go into it and move it around. And uh, this creates a little bit more of, of a sense of lost edges. I don't need to have all my edges sharp. Stefan's a master at this. Watch him work. Um, this guy here, I'm going to knock him into the background a little more. You know, maybe I'll put a little color in him later. Let's just see. Maybe not. Maybe he won't even be a person by the time I'm done. Maybe he won't be anything. So I'm just softening edges, getting rid of some of this crisp stuff. And I really don't care if I'm going over edges here. As long as I'm not making like a really dirty painting, I, I want to be thinking about, you know, creating a mode. The palette knife is great because it it puts lots of fresh color down. But one of the problems with it is sometimes it leaves so many edges that are so strong that you look at them too much. So again, with the dry brush, I'm always cleaning it out after I, you know one color and go into another. I'm going to take this into the tablecloth now and just soften a few things here. So our eye is drawn to a focal area here and here. I want to soften these things. It's the way we see. You know, we most of our vision is peripheral. I think I've talked about this before. So I go on and on about this with my students. But we, we can't look at everything in detail. It's just impossible to do that. You move your eyes around, you'll see one area in detail or a couple of areas, of course, but you can't see everything in detail. We're not like a camera that way. So um, we don't need to paint that way. It's fun if you can do it. And I admire people who, who can do that, but it doesn't necessarily make for a better painting. Um, you know, Rembrandt's paintings are very, very loose when you really look at them. So... Okay, soften a lot of stuff there. Okay. Uh, now the focal point in this painting, I want it to be that cup that he's carrying. So I'm going to do this now. I'm going to go into, I'm going to take a lizard and crimson, a bit of magenta. I just want to put a color right in here. And I'm going to bring in cadmium red on the edge of that. And that's going to be really the focal point. There's a whole story going here. Um, I have to be aware, you know, that my strongest color is right there. And everything else should be somewhat subjugated to that. The only other color that I may have is from a flower that's in this vase right here. And so I'm going to put that color in here. It's kind of a, it's a magenta. And maybe that's got a touch of red in it as well. It'll help pick up on that. Magenta or a fuchsia. I'm going to bring some white into that. Takes it towards the pink side. And I don't have to have a whole lot more than that. That's about it. Okay. Uh, when do you put these things in? It's always a question, right? Like, should I put it in now? Should I put it in later? But when it's there, it makes me more cognizant of the other colors that are going in elsewhere and make sure that I don't let them get too noisy so that they're taking away from 
the main focal area. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to go into the background again with some of the greens that I had going. And I want to just uh, get some good, strong color. I think I can afford to go with a darker green. I'm going to try this. I'm going to bring in a little bit of that dark color that I have. And maybe I'll bring a bit of blue into it so it feels like it's a little cooler. Mix it up on the palette. When you've pre-mixed a bunch of colors, it's nice because you can take these colors and you can just adapt them as you go. And hopefully they'll work in the space. Um, I'm going to go in behind here. I really want to bring up that clock on the wall too. It's another thing that's sort of neat. So I've made sort of a really gray green here and I'm going to bring that down. I'm not exactly following the program here. I'm not trying to copy the, the photo that I took. I just want to get some nice shapes going. And I can always bring more color back into it if I want to. You know, some of the original color that I used to make that, to make that area interesting, doesn't need a whole bunch of color to make that work. No, we don't really know what's going back there. That's its peripheral. So I'm going to take this green here, and this will be interesting against it because it's more vibrant. Make sure my architecture is going to work. And that wall just kind of disappears back there. Um, I want to get some ochres going. I feel like it just needs a little bit more warmth here and there. I can still bring in a bit of green so that there's some harmony in the ochres. Always thinking about harmonizing your colors. You know, what, what is the overall writing color in the painting? Um, but I can put an ochre in here and because it has a bit of green in it, and because there's some green behind it, that will still harmonize it. <clears throat> and if I want to lighten it a little bit, uh, and maybe warm it up a touch, um, I can bring some color up in here. Now when you add white to a color, it actually cools it. So I have to make sure I compensate for that. Bring in a little bit more of a lemon yellow, which is a cool yellow, by the way. Um, I can even bring in a touch of red and just, you know, let play with the colors, put them in the right place if you can until they look right. And then hopefully I don't even have to come back to it. So use a little more of this color here up against it. The walls in these places get really smoky and, uh, or they used to be smoky. They don't smoke in these places anymore, but there's still the yellow ochre all over the place because uh, some of them haven't been painted in many years. I've been in this one for a little while, so I don't know. I'm going to bring that green over, kind of like that. This will look very different from the painting I did before, because I'm working with some different colors and 
different kind of mood. The sun coming through into this place is from the west. Um, of course, it's called West Bunhof, the place on the outside of it. And you get this warm light. Right now, I've got it kind of on the cool side. So. Okay, I'm going to take that gray because I want to bend the wall back behind his head like I did here. So it comes along, it goes in, it comes out, it goes in again. So let's just do that. And I think I'm just going to keep it simple behind him. Less is more, right? That's the program. I could spend a long time painting all the details in this place could really could and you know it's a place that's worth painting the details if you want to do that but you can also really go for the mood of a place and not have all that detail there and still get the essence of it and in some ways i think i prefer it maybe that's the impressionist approach so i don't really need to tell the whole story and I'm saying that as a, you know, a, well, past illustrator, because um, illustration likes to tell the story. I always get into this discussion, you know, was Michelangelo a painter or an illustrator? Um, was the Sistine Chapel a story? And, you know, was that an illustration? It's just a question. So he was both. Okay. I'm going to bring a little bit of warmth in over his shoulder here. Let's see what that looks like. Okay. It's got a green face now. It's kind of neat. Uh, I'm going to grab some ochre. I'm going to put some flesh color in. So I'm going to use some yellow ochre. I use a tiny touch of cadmium red. And, um, well, I'm just going to throw this color in. I may need to neutralize it later. But let's just get something going. It looks like a cartoon color. You can always fix colors when you need to, where you need to. So using a brush a little too big for the job, that's the rule. It's a funny looking character. Okay. I'm going to pick up just the tiniest, you know, I've got flesh color here. I want to pick up a little something that accents it somewhere else. So I'm just going to drop a little color there. You know, if you can find places to use colors to pull them through the painting to harmonize, maybe it's the back of that chair. Um, maybe I drop a little bit into the edge of that vase. So I'm just trying to bring colors together here and there, and maybe they don't even make sense. Yeah, I can always get rid of them later, but uh, I just want to bring... Um, this idea of harmonizing color goes beyond um, just putting one color all the way through all your colors. Color harmony can also be in finding that color in other places in your painting. Okay. Uh, I'm going to grab that nice color here. 
let's get a chair going in. So, wow, that's pretty strong. Maybe a little too strong. I'm going to cool that down a little bit. I want it to go into shadow over here. And as it comes into the light, it's a little more intense. A little lighter. There. I think I really need to make it lighter again. Now, this is interesting. I'm going to bring a little bit of red into that color. It's almost like a pink now. And let's see what happens here. Yeah, that's more like it. I can take a brush now, work that color out a bit. Gets lost in the shadows. Go in behind it here, with a bit of color, soften these edges. And I want to make sure I get the edge of my table working here, through here. A little dark in there. I'm just messing around right now. Squinting at it. Trying to get a feeling like, well, there's a chair or something there. I'm going to lighten the edge of that chair and get even more color in it. And, you know, going for that red, it sort of has a, a pinky feel. So just do that. Sometimes it doesn't always make sense, the thing we do. It, you just have to do it till it looks right. So... I wish I could explain it easier than that. I'm working too long in that chair. No, it's getting too much attention. So I'll come back to it later if I need to. Uh, there are other chairs around here. Maybe I should actually have a look at those. <laughs> so. There's one over here as well. And again, I'm picking up a color that creates a, a color rhythm of sorts and, and harmonizes this painting. And I'm just chunking it in. I don't need to get really you know, fancy and get a lot of detail into this. And there's even another chair a little further along which I didn't draw in. I think I left it out on purpose, but I think a third chair wouldn't hurt. Maybe up in here. Just picking up the light a little bit. That's a nice color that I can use to draw our eye into there. So those two have some harmony and what the heck, why not bring it into here also? So now we have a rhythm of three and it feels like well there's like three chairs or something going on there that they relate to each other okay now we've got all these blues and violets in the foreground um, I want to get a little bit of that stuff going elsewhere in the painting too. So I'm just looking for places where maybe I can do that. Um, I'm going to bring a violet into the um, tray underneath here that's holding the cup. I'm going to draw that in with a palette knife. And this is where there's a focal area. So I'm also going to bring in a little highlight that catches the edge of that tray. It's not in my photograph, but 
I can bring the eye over this way just by doing that. Need a little bit more flesh color. So going into my ochre, cad red, and he's got a hand that's holding this. You don't always have to define all the fingers. I just want to get a sense of what's going on. I can always go back and put detail in later. Like that's detail is for the end or, you know, well into it. I just want to get the sense of what's going on here. Again. Less is more. All right. Hi, Vessel. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for the compliment. Okay. Um, I want to set up these other tables that I see here. Setting tables. Okay. Um, and I'm going to bring some light into this one over here. I like when you can just suggest something and because there's something else that you've defined before, uh, we start to understand what that is. That's just fun to do. And on the back of this chair, I'm going to bring in a little bit more of that chair color that I saw so that it just says, you know what, there's another one over here. Okay. And over on the other side, why not? Um, there is a table in here that that person's sitting at, and this may be a little too strong. Let's just see. Okay, again, just really trying to go for the mood here. I want to start to crisp up shapes here and there where I need to, to define the sense of what's going on behind in the background, but not too much detail. It can float away here. Uh, that's okay. I think we can get that clock to sit on this wall if I just bring a line down here this way. Okay. I'm going to pop a little more light color into that clock right there so it's a little better to find. Funny, because when you look at this, you wouldn't know it was a clock. I know it is because I can see it in the photo. But it's these shapes. Again, it's peripheral, right? Um, we don't have to explain it all. Uh, I'm going to take a little bit of a lighter color. So when I'm grabbing the flesh color that I had out here before, and I want to bring it in over here because 
that area was looking just like it needs a little more light. Like maybe there's some light coming in from this side here. Of course, if it's doing that there, chances are there's a little light coming in. This may be a little strong, I don't know. Let it come in from over there too. There's some lamps that are over some paintings on the wall here. I'm just going to throw in a light color there. I'll throw in another light color here. So we set up a rhythm, maybe a hint of one down there. Doesn't need more than that. Okay. Now I'm gonna, I want to go in and define this guy a little bit more. Make sure I've got his sh shoulders in the right place. And I'm going to go into this green that was behind him. Just crisp this up a little bit. I find I'm using the palette knife more and more these days because it forces you to simplify. And it leaves shapes that we uh, typically wouldn't leave. And it makes it feel a little less like, well, I've got my brush out and I'm doing everything with a brush. And you know, look how clever that is. Um, the palette knife tends to give you more of an organic feel. Funny, for a straight instrument, you wouldn't imagine that that would be the case. But you can scrub at it, and it really does. It forces you to, to define in very simple ways. And since I lightened that area before, when I put these darker shapes against it now, it has a little more meaning. It builds texture into the shadows. OK. I want to define this little vase a little better now. I think it's time to get to that. And of course, with glass, it picks up all kinds of colors from around wherever it's sitting. So I can go in with some of these colors that I used in the tablecloth and just drop them in here. I don't have to get fussy about this. just want to get something going that looks like, well, it's glass. It's picking up some light. And it's even picking up uh, a stem, just a little bit of green here. And maybe it's even picking up a really bright little spot here. I can go in beside this with some darks. I have to be careful here so that I don't make a mess of my drawing. But I can go in, just define edges a little more. Sometimes if you want to paint a sharp or small edge, you go up against it with more paint, right? And then, because to try and put that in with a palette knife is really hard to control. But I can go into this now and just scrape up and soften this area in behind. Oh, I need to get some color out of my brush. It was sounding so simple for a second. All right, 
There we go. Now I just want to go into this. And here. Now we have kind of a relationship between these two things. And because it's glass, and it is also another focal area, I can throw a little bit of a highlight right there. It doesn't have a base on it, so I need to put something down there. Maybe I'll get a, a wee little brush and just try and tickle in. Uh, a little bit of a base under it. Let's see if I can do this. I need to pick up it's a couple of dark spots in here. And I want to show a base of some kind in there. I also want to be able to see through this. You know, I'm spending a bit of time in detailing this, but if you think about putting a bit of detail in a couple of places, you don't have to put it in everywhere. That's a nice way about painting this way. Now, I can just take a little highlight around the outer edge of this. Hoping I can do this with a palette knife. If not, sometimes I'll wait until stuff is dry. And go into it later. But if I can do it while I'm working on it, it's nice. The paint's out. I don't have to get mixing a whole bunch of other paint to make this work. That's enough for me for now. I mean, you know, there's a boss, there's a flower, whatever. Uh, I sort of feel like I want to bring a little bit more red, maybe an orangey red into that. So it's a little bit more in the foreground. Slightly warmer. Just a little spot. Okay. I also want to pick up the top of that cup. So I'm going to use some magenta with white and create a, a little highlight on the top of that cup. All right. Here. And of course, when I do that, the palette knife takes the paint a little past where I want it to go, but that's okay. Let some of that red find its way into the background. It's okay. Thanks, Andrew. All right. Okay, I'm gonna go into this guy's face just wanted to find it a little bit more uh, in the shadow area. I'm taking red. I'm going to mix in just like a darker flesh color. Maybe I need to bring in a bit of blue. And I want to get some of the shadows that are happening in this face worked out. Get in underneath his nose. And mouth. I've got a very tiny brush from working with here. Just trying to draw it out. Sorry, I just can't get Hitler out of my head. <laughs> I shouldn't mention his name. It's a painting of a cafe in Vienna. So, anyhow, it's just. He's looking a little too.
like someone we don't talk about there. Um, let me just get a little more lighter flesh coloring, uh, color going here. Um, just going to try this. And kind of pink looking, but I think it'll work. Bring in a little bit more warmth in this in the cheek here. And I do need to create another value that's a little bit darker that goes, that takes the planes of his face around to the other side here. That can be darker still. Maybe not that dark. Let's try it though. Okay, you know, when you're working on faces, uh, it's just really trying to get the shapes right, simplify them. And when I say simplify them, like literally, you don't need to see eyes and all that stuff. Just look for the shadows until there's a sense of what this person might look like. Maybe it's John Cleese. And if it turns or here, then it also has to turn in his forehead, doesn't it? So let me just get some shadow up there as well. Let's soften that just a touch there. Now, this is the kind of thing, honestly, you can fiddle at it for so long and <laughs> it can take too much of your time. And really, I can just get back to this when I need to later. Uh, okay, I just want to get his hair working a little better. Uh, get the shapes of his hair in the right place. The first pass at it, you know, when you're doing these things, you you want to get the overall big shapes. And then as you get into the smaller ones, you can refine where you need to. He's got quite a chin now. Okay. All right. I, I want to pick up a little bit more color in his cheek and keep it light. I might even bring a tiny touch of yellow into it. A lot of cadmium going here. Okay. And I just want to hit this right there, there, and his ear. Why not? Okay. In the ear, you get lots of chroma. You get lots of reds going on, so I'm just going to hit that there. I don't need to detail everything. That's probably enough for now. Okay. All right. Wow. Okay. Starting to come together. Uh, I want to deal with a few of these areas down in here. They're sort of obscure. There's not a lot, a whole lot going on down there. Uh, I don't want to just bash it in like there's nothing, but I also don't want it to be very important. So I'm just going to go into this area with some violet, and I'm just going to cover stuff up. Um, and so that it's not important. Violet's one of those colors that it still has some excitement, but it it's not one that we go looking for. And... Um, 
often you'll see it in shadow areas. And so sometimes you can just take an area and just kind of cool it down with a violet, keep your edges soft. And um, there's, again, a sense of atmosphere, something going on, um, but you don't have to, it's, it's more about color and it's more about keeping the focus in, on this gentleman here. So uh, I'm going to grab some light color here. Go into my white. I may have to go get some fresh white at this stage. Let's just see. Um, I want to bring some nice clean whites into a couple of areas here. Let's just see what happens when I do this. I want to have a sense of the light finding its way through here. Um, again, always looking for some kind of rhythm uh, that helps tie all this stuff together. For these textures, they help. I sort of wish you could see this in different lighting condition. Um, the light is very flat, so I don't get a lot of glare. But when you see this in real life, it has a lot more depth and more dimension. Pick up the edge of his collar right there again. And maybe here. And I'm going to take that light color Underneath the light here, there's something that's hitting the table. So I can do that. You know, when you put a color in, there should be a reason for it, ideally. It's not like, okay, a random, oh, I'm just going to throw something down. Um, you should be looking for why certain colors happen and certain uh, light values happen. You know, what is that about? Sometimes it's a light, like picking up on the edge of a table like so and sometimes you need to put these things in just to define the form um that's okay i want to define the edge of that table more i can just bring a little bit more light into that and that helps um, on the wall behind there are some paintings underneath here so i'm going to put some lights in here there I'll put another one in next to it. And again, there are rhythms that are going on here. And I can put just a touch of dark against that. That'll make it feel like a frame. That one too. And I'll go back into that nice clean green. Clean up the edges. Okay. Sometimes when I'm trying to smooth the color out, I get these interesting textures that happen with the point of the palette knife. Where are we time-wise? 3.28. Okay, well, getting close. I don't want to keep painting forever here um, because, well, first of all, everyone will leave. Uh, but secondly, um, I don't know how it is for you, but I get to a point where it's like I really need to step back from it and think about what it needs, you know, what other things are going to make this stronger? Um, and I often find that I need less than I think I do. Uh, and sometimes it's just a couple of little details that help bring it up, that make it better. There's a person over on the far side. And, you know, I don't know if I want him there or not. I can, I can put some flesh color there. And maybe, you know, his hands are over here or something. 
maybe there's someone there um i can bring in another color like there's something that he's wearing but i really don't want to get too much detail because if i do i'm going to take away from what's going on in the center here so this is again peripheral you know how far do you go with that uh and that's always the question, yeah, the balance. The more I put in of this, the more we're going to look at this guy over here. And I'm not really sure it's going to help, honestly. So um, I'll just drop something in. And this is the sort of stuff I'll do, you know, later. I'll look at these things and think, well, okay, is that an important thing to have? Is it the right color? Do I need that? Um, can I get away with without doing all of that? Um, when I say get away with it, it's not like, okay, I'm not trying to be lazy about this. I'm trying to make an image that is cohesive, that has some th things that hold it together, right? So um, I'm now going to my palette and taking some of the colors that happened uh, by chance while I was mixing other things up and incorporating them where I can because all of those colors that made this painting in various ways, um, I can go into those colors and adapt them um, to make sure that everything stays cohesive. So, Uh, just defining edges a little bit. Uh, there isn't really a shadow underneath this uh, vase, which is interesting. Don't know why. Light must be coming more from the front, so that would explain it. I'm going to just grab some more white here and just make sure I get a little bit of color into it because if I don't, it just will stand out too much. It won't look right. And I'm going to throw this right in here. It's a white tablecloth. The colors underneath help. They sort of blend in a little. It's a crisp, clean tablecloth. And it's important to get that working in the foreground. And it, there's lots of textures and things that happen and colors that happen in, in white. Uh, they're very subtle. If you really want to see the master of this, it's Monet. Um, he would fill, and actually Soroya. Joaquin Soroya he was a master of whites, in my opinion. Not just my opinion. Okay. Framing that with those whites. Angelica, thanks for joining today. This is great. I really appreciate everyone who shows up. And uh, yeah, the palette knife is really a lot of fun. It really forces you to work in a fresh way. Sharp edges get our eye. So look, that sharp edge is here in the foreground. And our eye drops away underneath here. We don't uh, have to... You know, look at everything. Everything's not important. So, um, okay. Now I'm looking at the whole thing. It's coming together okay. I feel now I can pick up a couple of little details. And again, I don't want to go too far with this. But I can pick up a couple of lights um, closer to him. So that, you know, he's, he's important. He's, he's there, but I can pick up just a couple of highlights back here when it, when these frames are coming into the picture. 
no pun intended. Um, I can also bring in a little bit of color into the whites that we see in him. So, you know, those warm and cool colors together really help uh, add some life Yeah, you can sort of see this guy moving along. Yeah, he's uh, he's in a hurry, or maybe not, actually. The guys in the cafes in Vienna usually aren't in much of a hurry. <laughs> they spend a lot of time chatting and smoking, so it's okay. That's part of what they do. I think I have it in for the waiters and waitresses in Vienna. Actually, the waitresses seem to be a little bit more alive than the guys. But it's a big deal, you know, in uh, being a waiter in a cafe in Austria uh, because they go to school for this. They train for, I think it's three or four years. Like, it's a big deal. It's not like, okay, I'm just going to be a waiter. Um, it's not like here in Canada where, you know, it's a summer job. There, it's a profession, and they're very proud of what they do, and they remember what your order is. Um, they're very professional when they come to the table. They do what they need to do. Um, and, uh, you know, I, as much as I have had some kind of crazy experiences with some of them, uh, with a lot of attitude, if I can say that, um, you know, they, uh, they have a tough job. Sometimes the cafes are really, really busy and they have to be serious about what they're doing. Okay. This area here is a little messy and, and I'm sort of looking at it and thinking, you know, it's just, it needs to be better defined. So, um, when I squint at it, it kind of, feels like it should be a little bit darker. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna go in and it's like a gray that I had there before. I'm gonna make it a darker green gray to take the value down. You know, if I've got those kinds of contrast happening in here, I should be having a little bit more contrast in the background. I'm gonna try this. It could be darker still. And I can pick up some of the colors that I've used before. Of course, when you go into the shadows, you see less color. They're more neutral. Um, the value is what's important. So I just put a big blob in there that didn't work. So I can just scrape it out. In fact, I can scrape all of that there. Scrape it out. It's just paint. That's all it is. I'm going to go back in with something a little bit darker. See if it helps. Okay, actually, that, I think that is better. It kind of anchors this zone here. Sometimes when these things are dry, I will go in and just put a, a little glaze over areas and just knock them down, make them less important. But it did need those darks. In fact, I can even go darker, I think. I'm going to bring in a little bit more green into this because it's starting to lose its identity. Again. I don't know how well this is going to work. We'll see. And maybe that might be too much. Let's just see. You know, I'm saying less is more. Look how much I'm doing. Holy smokes. And now that's getting a lot of attention because there's a lot of chroma in it. But as soon as I go in with a, a big brush and just soften that down, it should help. Let's just see. Oh, 
Well, it's not brilliant. It looks kind of mucky. I think there's too much chrome in it now. And it needs to be, has to have more ochre in it. It went too much towards the viridian. So, if I bring a little bit of red into an ochre, and you know, this might just make a real mess of it. Let's see what happens. I want to get a color that's going to work against this one here. And yeah, it's pretty dark, but it's a better color arrangement. Okay, I'm just going right over what I've got here. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think I can live with that better right now. Again, you know, I don't want to get really hung up on these things that can be corrected um, at this stage. I will paint on this some more when I can get back from it, look at it properly, and I'll post that. We're at 340 now. <laughs> Art Madness, hello. I think I like the name. That's cool. And nice. Thanks. And nice to see you here. Um, yeah, his hand is a little bit small. Yeah, you're right. So let's make it a little bit bigger. I can get right in there. And I can make his hand a little bit bigger. And again, we don't have to have a lot of detail. So um, I'm going to call it now because I think I'm getting to the point where I really do need this uh, kind of get back from it. Uh, I'm going to come to you. And um, nice to see you, Karina, by the way. Um, okay. And let me just reverse this camera out so that I can say hi. <clears throat> there we go. Hi. Uh, okay. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Um, it was fun for me to do this. Uh, it's kind of neat to revisit an old painting you've done before and uh, give it another whirl. Um, I think I could paint this one like 10 times and it would look different every time. Uh, but every time you do a painting, you learn something, hopefully. And I'm hoping that you guys learned something today too. I, I, you know, you listen to me rambling away and talking about all this stuff and I, I don't know how much sticks and I don't know how much it helps, but it's really um, fun to paint and know that there are others who are out there who enjoy painting and who enjoy watching. And on that note, please share this around. Um, if you like what you're seeing, if you like what you saw today, give me a thumbs up. That's really nice to see. If you have any other comments, um, if you want to post anything on uh, Facebook, please do that. Um, I think I gained 30 new subscribers within the last uh, uh, month, which I'm really excited about. That's super. When we reach the 500 mark, um, uh, someone's going to get a, a painting. And um, it may be one of the paintings that I've demoed. So it's going to be a draw. It'll, I, it'll be random. I have no idea who's going to win. But anyone who's already subscribed has an opportunity to, to win this. And there are a couple of other things that I have in mind that I may give away as well. So um, um, that's just an incentive for you to keep coming back um, and also to let your friends know about this. Um, hopefully this is good for any artists, younger artists who are watching. You know, um, you can learn a lot by watching other people paint. And there's so much great stuff on YouTube. If you haven't watched Stefan paint, you should. Um, it's in German, but um, you can still see what he's doing. So uh, by all means, check him out, uh, Stefan Nutzel. And um, if you're not a friend with me on Facebook, I'm, you know, I shouldn't say I'm always looking for friends, but if you like what I'm doing and you're interested, um, I'm always posting on Facebook, so. Uh, thanks again for everyone who showed up. I really appreciate uh, Be safe. The world's crazy right now. Um, we can stay home and we can paint and we can do this stuff. And we're, I'm very thankful, uh, really thankful that we can at least 
make our way through all of this without going insane because there's something that we love to do. So, um, and thanks again, Andrew, uh, Stilio, Petra, um, be, be well, and uh, I'll sign out now. So I could keep talking for a long time, <laughs> not pain, but anyhow, here we go. We'll see you next Friday. Take care. Bye-bye.